Hello and welcome back. I'm Dana and this is one of my sketchbooks and we're going to be touring it today. This is a Royal Talons Art Creation sketchbook and it's in the colour Fresh Mint and it's the roughly A5 size which is 13 by 21 centimetres. This sketchbook is particularly important to me and I have fond memories with it for a few reasons, one of which is that this was the sketchbook that I took with me for one of my trips to see my partner because we're a long distance and we ended up getting up to a lot of fun little adventures and things while we were on this particular trip and I also got to meet up with one of my online friends and we met up in a cat cafe. So that's where this sticker comes from. This sticker is by this creator here. And these stickers I picked up while we were in the Smoky Mountains. So these are all just miscellaneous stickers that I picked up in different places along the way. This is by the creator Cakey Quake. And it is the Azem Crystarium uh, crystal sticker. That's what it's called. I don't know if Kiki Quake still sells these. They weren't in the store the last time that I had a look, but that's who created the sticker. And with all of that information out of the way, let's get into the sketchbook. All right, let's get going. So this sketchbook was started on the 6th of November 2022 and finished on the 26th of March 2023. So this is just over a year old now and it's going to be interesting to see how my skills have improved from then to now as I'm looking through this. And this took me about five months to complete. I've got my contact information there so I covered it up. And I just gathered a bunch of things, especially on our trip through the Smokies, a lot of that is in here. And I've got some packaging tape from an order that I got, a business card. This was from a, a scarf that I ordered. This first spread was on my flight over and I was very, very tired <laughs> because I'd stayed up the night before the flight and when I am either really tired or I don't know what to draw or I'm just waking up I have a few different subjects that I tend to just gravitate towards when I can't really think and one of those are animal skulls. They're not too intense for me to draw so they're very easy for me to go towards when I am in a very very tired headspace <laughs> and they were very helpful on the flight. On the flight I also did these two as well, some studies. And these were done on a road trip. So we were in the car when I did these and I did these in Unipin brush pen. And I need to draw hippos more. I need to um, learn the skull anatomy as well. I might do some skull studies and study their anatomy a bit more soon. Uh, this is where we run into issues with alcohol markers. I did these studies just in the brush pen when I went to the aquarium with my partner. And when I got back, Afterwards, I went in and coloured them in with alcohol markers, but I ended up finding out later on that they develop yellow stains over a, the course of about a week, two weeks. They develop a yellow stain on the page that's on this side and the page that's following it. Wherever the ink touches, it ends up developing these yellow stains. So I ended up getting rid of these markers and I gave them to someone else who was warned that they're yellow. But these show up a few times and as you can see I wasn't very happy when I found out that they yellowed. But we went to the cinema a couple times while we were in the Smokies. This was the aquarium we went to that I drew it. Drew those, I think they're sea cucumbers I drew those in. 
Uh, I picked up some art supplies while I was there, some just fun things to sketch with, but also some things that I've really wanted to try out for a long time. So these are tricolour pencils. I find that they don't show up amazingly well on this sketchbook paper. Some of them do better than others. I particularly like the Evening Storm. But I also picked up some General Cedar Point pencils and General's Layout pencils. These are pencils that I've wanted to try out because some artists that I followed for years use them. And I did end up really falling in love with the Cedar Point. These are some other supplies I picked up as well on the trip. I picked up some brush pens here that are all different colours and you'll see me use these <laughs> further into the book. And this is also when I picked up my Bemoji brush pen and I'm still using this pen to this day a year later. It hasn't run out of ink yet. It's, it's lasting a really long time. It has started to go dull on the tip now though. And, but that is where I, end, I got it from. I got some water soluble markers here. I got yellow, orange and a red. I do really love how these look on this paper and how, especially how this red looks when it's watered out. It's really pretty. And these were more animal skulls, but done with the tiger tricolor pencil. So this one. And as you can see, they are pretty difficult to see on this paper. The tricolor pencils are quite hard color pencils. So this they don't match up that well with this paper. I prefer using them on other papers that have more of a rougher texture and can grip the pigment more. When we were in the Smokies, I picked up some postcards and things and sent some to family, but I kept some in here as well. We went to Cade's Cove one day and that was where we ended up seeing some black bears. I mainly took a lot of reference while we were there, but I did draw this study of a fence. I felt quite intimidated at the time when we were there to draw or paint. And that's something that I want to work on a little bit more this year and moving forward is figuring out how to, not figuring out, but like overcoming any roadblocks that I have with drawing and painting when I'm out and about and traveling. But I, I do still draw and paint from all the references I took that day. This is a portrait that I did from Imagination, so this is just an, imagine, an imaginative elf lady. I wanted to figure out how I wanted to uh, stylize different facial features with this. One thing that you'll see me starting to explore in this book are heads, figuring out the pain points that I had with heads, specific angles I struggle with, but also things like figuring out hair because hair was something I wasn't that comfortable with at this point in time. So you'll see my journey of learning how to draw hair, how to draw different head angles, and also figuring out how to draw facial features and how I want to stylize facial features. I, I start exploring that in this sketchbook, but this I took a photo of and then I took it into Clip Studio Paint and I did a paint, uh, like a painting over the top of it with the pencil line still showing through using a multiply layer. If I remember, I'll put it on screen what that ended up looking like. These are arm studies from the Morpho books. I'll just grab one. So this is one of my Morpho books, I've got a few, and I use these as part of my anatomy studies and studying in general. The simplified forms one that I was just showing is most likely where these are from, because at this stage I was using Morpho as one of a few different resources to study simplifying anatomy, human anatomy down into simple shapes. 
and I was focusing a lot on arms and hands at this point. And we have here, follow what feels good. And more morpho studies here. These are done in blue ballpoint pen and echoline markers. This was, I think, from imagination. And I was really struggling with how I wanted to draw noses, but other facial features also. Still in the early stages of figuring out things like line weight, simplification, stylizing while also still learning to draw, learning to draw hair, learning to draw faces and things like that as well. But for the time I had fun doing this. Then these were some studies from reference in, I believe they were in the Cedar Point pencils. But we have here, I want to improve inking faces from the front and three quarter views. How do I want to represent the nose, the eyes and the mouth? Look into what I like and dislike, both stylized and more realistic. This was something that I wasn't too happy with at the time, but it's interesting now looking back and seeing my growth and pain points, the struggles, the ups and downs. I didn't like how I simplified the facial features in this. I didn't like how I did the colouring. I didn't like how I simplified the snakes. And I learned a lot from this. So when I say that I don't like a lot of this, I do want to just say that I also appreciate and I look back on this fondly because it helped me figure things out and move forward in my art practice. So I don't look at that with any form of hatred. I view it as a learning experience and something that has helped me learn more about myself and where I need, want to grow. These are all Prismacolor pencils. This was from a photo I took when we were out driving. I wasn't the one driving when I took the photo, so I should probably just specify that. I was being driven around when I took photos. So I did a study of that. And part of the I want to learn how to draw facial features things, I studied a few different ways people simplify noses. We have a pencil study here. I believe all of these were done with the cedar point. And then this was from reference. So just playing around with some of the nose ideas here and then taking it into this. This was another kind of face to face moment for me of seeing where I was at in my skill levels and where I need to go to improve. These were attempts at going straight in with brush pen, so not having any sketch underneath, just going direct in with black pen for the first time. And even those um, hippos that I'd done earlier, I think I had pencil sketches underneath, but especially for drawing heads, this was something that was really hard but fun as I put there. And I also wrote, getting proportions down without underlying structure sketches is rough. So this kind of showed me uh, where, I, like, where I'm at when it comes to drawing direct in pen, or where I was at at the time. And all I did was I just kept going. I kept going, kept going, kept going. And then this one didn't actually come out too bad for where my skill level was at at the time. And... We have some morpho studies here of folds. This is probably from the clothing morpho book. Some studies of deer. I think this is the first time I've ever drawn deer. So I learned from these that I needed to go off and study deer anatomy and how it's different from other animals I'm more familiar with. I also picked up these cards. There we go. I needed a really good cough for a moment. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I am struggling with hay fever this spring, <laughs> but back to this. I picked up some wildlife cards while we were in the Smokies and then used them as inspiration for drawing. And I figured out that I had a lot that I needed to learn about deer and I decided to 
write about the fact that I needed to go do that at some point. So you'll see me occasionally write about my sketches in this. So again, this is another unfortunate one with the alcohol markers. This was going straight in with alcohol marker, no pencil sketch, and then doing brush lines on top. And I really enjoyed this process. So one thing I was learning in this book, in the sketchbook, was how I wanted to sketch, how I wanted to draw, all sorts of just hows. How do I want to do this? So I started exploring and experimenting a lot with different materials, different styles, diff really just trying to start exploring a little bit more instead of just rote studying. So again though the problem is is that <laughs> it bled onto the side but we have a bunch of different studies here. Also still struggling with certain angles of the head. And again here you can see how it's bled through. You can see also how the purple started turning pink for some reason. And this is the last time I used the alcohol markers because of all of this. Right, I've covered her up. So, so these are some Claire Wendling studies that I did in pencil and I really wanted to look at how she stylized shapes and also her lines. And then I also wrote down here I don't want to use these markers again because of my experience with them bleeding so I believe I don't use them in, anymore in the sketchbook. But Claire Wendling is an artist that I constantly look to. She's one of my inspirations especially for lines and shapes. Here we have some more studies. These are both from photo reference. I didn't end up finishing this and I do really want to go back and explore this pose again at some point. She's holding a knife here and she has like a really fancy dress on. I really want to go back and do that at some point. I might even make it into a watercolour, ink and watercolour illustration, but we'll see about that. I was also starting to explore different facial shapes, different ages, and just starting to exp expand my experiences with other types of faces. Which led to this. So I started drawing from the resource Earth's World who goes to county fairs. Hang on, I need to cough again. This is hay fever is going wild today. There we go, I'm sorry about that. I'll have to edit out all of the coughing in this. So I started studying from Earth's World and Earth is someone who goes to county fairs in America and takes candid photographs of different people and you get all sorts of um, ethnicities, ages, face types, weights, and you can really get a nice range of portraits to draw from and study from. And all of these were done in the general cedar point. These are some frog skulls, some more morpho hands. So again, I was still really trying to get the basics of drawing hands down. And I was really enjoying the Cedar Point pencils by this point. This was done using Albrecht Dura pencils. So these are watercolour, well, water-soluble colour pencils. And I used CYMK, so cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And that was all I used for this. At this point, you can see that I wasn't too confident with laying down dark values yet. I wasn't confident with in colour pencil. I wasn't confident with really pressing the pencil down and getting some dark marks in there. You could definitely go a lot darker with them on this paper than I did with this, but it's interesting to see where my confidence level was at <laughs> at this point in time. These were studies using pictures from the earlier trip to the aquarium. So these were all done direct with brush pen from the brush pens I picked up earlier. I didn't do any under sketch on these. Then these were done in polychromous colour pencils. I used two different kinds of blues. 
here we have some more morpho studies here so i did some studies of folds and then i did some especially torso studies i was trying to get down in this and the relationship with the shoulders and the upper arms more torso studies here and just some random sketches of a plush that i have on my shelf with my sketchbooks so I'm just going to cover this bit up and I'm going to talk about it in a moment. So we have some warm-ups here, we have some dexterity warm-ups, we have some perspective and simple shape warm-ups. And sometimes what I'll do then is if I do a warm-up page I'll end up using this page for swatches and things later on and I'll just flip back to it. Here we have an attempt at taking what I'd been studying from Morpho and then applying it to photo reference. So I had a reference of a model here and then I was doing a torso study using that reference based on the studying I'd been doing with Morpho. So kind of testing myself on what I'd been learning using the photo reference. And then the next stage following this would be to figure out what I'd what I've learned from memory by doing the same thing but from imagination. So studying anatomy and then studying from photo reference and then studying from imagination, that kind of like back and forth. Here is a journal entry and I'm kind of reflecting on my experiences so far. So for those of you who don't know, I did a video recently where I was talking about how I had an art teacher in the past who used to who used to rip up our sketchbooks and rip up our artwork. And over the years I've been doing a lot of healing, especially when it comes to using sketchbooks. And this was where I was starting to really come face to face with a lot of things and overcome things and unpack a lot of things. So I'm gonna have a lot of journal entries in here. Some of them are just gonna be about meeting my partner and things like that and what we did together and then some journal entries are going to be unpacking and healing a lot of stuff <laughs> so that's an unpacking one on this next page we have a head from imagination and then we have some studies of wood so these are all different like logs and pieces of wood that are outside on the grass and I wanted to try and take what I'd been learning from, say, like Claire Wendling, for example, and apply it to these by thinking about designing the shapes of the lines and sh and just really thinking about shape and line design with them. And then that was a little landscape, probably based on the Smokies and the references I got from that, but I didn't end up continuing it. And then one thing I started figuring out with the sketchbook was the idea of recording my ideas down as I was going along. Sometimes I'd record my ideas down as little thumbnails or full sketches, but then sometimes I might get some ideas and I just don't have the time or the energy to be sketching thumbnails for all of them. So one of my practices now in my sketchbook is to write down notes. If I have a bunch of ideas or I'm brainstorming, I'll just write them all down and then I can always go back to them and then do sketches of them. Here are some more studies from aquariums, but this is a different aquarium this time. I did all of these while I was at the aquarium and it was a really fun little day out. I went with my brother and we ended up doing a bunch of sketching. Yeah, I had a lot of fun that day. I really, really love how I did that one. I also really like that one <laughs> for some reason. Little Clive is, is best boy as well. This was prep for Funguary, so this was probably around January time here. And I did a mixture of the pixie cap mushroom and the turtle, and this is what it ended up looking like. So I did the planning for that in here. And I did one of these a week, and I think I did this the week before February started, I'm not super sure now. This was another attempt at doing colour pencil, but I think this one was with polychromos this time. And I added orange into the mix. And I enjoyed the process, 
but I also recognised that there was a lot that I needed to improve at from it. Still not super confident with the values. Went in again with another attempt here and I figured out from this one that I needed to improve quite a bit and practice hair because I didn't know really what to do with the hair. So I wrote down here, I like the process of opposite. Not sure how I want to do hair in colour pencil though, practice drawing hair. Then we have some overlapping cubes here to warm up. That's a really fun exercise. Gets your brain thinking. So here we have me studying hair. So I wrote down that I need to study hair. And I studied hair. So these are all different artists. I have all of the references for these on a board on Pinterest. It'll be the face and figure uh, inspirations board. But some of the artists just off the top of my head are Loish, uh, Rumba Montald and Dave Milan. These are studies of a cat skull. So I have a resin replica. This is not real. It's a resin replica of a cat skull. And I did all of these studies based on this. At some point I want to get some resin replicas of some big cat skulls and maybe a bear skull at some point, but that's a, a long Long-term plan, long-term goal was <laughs> to get some other resin replicas. So this was another pain point for me in this sketchbook and I did a journal entry on it, which I'll talk about. And this was another exercise where I did alcohol marker first and then I did brush pen on top. And it was a fun exercise, but I also came face to face with a lot of where I need to improve. I did not like how this came out at all at the time and I came face to face with things like I don't know how I want to draw noses, I don't know how to do certain face angles, I don't know how to do hair or how I want to do hair, I also came face to face with I have proportional issues, I came face to face with a lot of things with this and that ended up bringing up a lot of the old worries and old problems with the sketchbooks and sketches and, and things being ripped up and how certain people would react or how a certain person would react if we didn't do something that was perfect first time around. So I unpacked a lot of that here and just reminded myself that I have control of whether or not I continue and pick up the pencil again. This is when I started a course on life drawing animals and so these are basically gesture drawings but for animals and I started off by getting comfortable with it by studying from pictures and then later I end up in the sketchbook moving on to studying from videos. These are all done using watercolour so this is a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine and a water brush pen or a water brush. <laughs> so these are more of them. This is the second funguary that I did. These were using polychromos magenta and I really really like sketching in that colour in the sketchbook. Another study, this was using erasable colour pencil and then blue biro on top, blue ballpoint pen. Now I tend to just go straight in with the ballpoint, I don't do erasable colour pencil underneath but then I did notes on things that I need to work on and things that I noticed I improved at. Then I did some more studies of hair. Again, these are all on that board. This is a journal entry of my visit and a study of a hostel. The next <laughs> journal entry or the end of the journal entry and then a drawing of peanuts. 
who was resting her head on my hand, and from this I figured out that although I'd been learning how to draw big cats, uh, that didn't necessarily equate to my understanding of domestic cats, so I knew that I needed to go off and study domestic cats after drawing this. This was done from imagination, and I was able to see a lot of improvement from doing this from imagination, especially when it came to my understanding of hair from all of the studying I'd been doing. There were also still areas that I knew I needed to improve at, but that was a, a bit of a confidence booster at the time. These are some studies of eyes by Ian McCaig. And then I have a study from Photo Reference. Lots to work on and improve at, but look how far you've come. Well done, keep going. And you can definitely see, especially neck down, you can see a lot of improvement compared to some of my previous sketchbooks. Another figure drawing here and more notes on where I've improved, where I need to improve. This was using videos this time and the, I didn't pause the videos, I just let the video play and I did sketches while the animal was moving or blissfully sometimes while it was sat and it, its head was moving. And then I went back in later and did some pencil on top of that one. Some more morpho studies here and then writing some notes about things that I wanted to do. Again, starting to write down things like to-do lists and potential sketch ideas. Another journal entry. And then some studies of mushrooms. This was for the third week of Fungary, where I ended up doing a toad. I'm not sure if I did the sketch in this book. I might have done. But it was this guy. Some more morpho here and this time it was using Tombow marker and then I think it was brush pen on top or it might have been a, I think that might have actually just been a fine liner. And then here you might barely be able to see it. I did, I started doing a pencil sketch but I didn't end up continuing it so I'll try and pick this up without moving everything. Some more morpho here, again using the Tombow marker and pen on top with a little bit of colour pencil. Here we go, so this was the week three planning for what I just showed you of this little guy. I did value studies here because I wasn't sure whether I wanted him to be darker than the mushrooms or the other way around and I ended up deciding on this one. Some notes from the course I was doing and some more morpho here and then I did some acrylic markers which work, they work okay on this paper mainly for just doing background stuff and this was grey brush pen I don't know if that looks better or worse but <laughs> more studies here and the pen had a little bit of an accident on this one some leg studies here i think these were from photo reference of some figure drawing photos some notes and then this was a portrait in polychromos some gesture drawing of watching family playing pool at the pub and i was applying like the vilpu approach to this these I did while I was on the bus and <laughs> I found this really hard but really fun to do at the same time. 
drawing on the bus is hard lol. But it was fun. This was a study of Jeremy Mann. I have his volume two sketchbook book and then some watercolour down here. And then this was the plan for the final Fungury piece that I did. Which is this one. These were some plein air drawings that I did while we were watching a like car race thing <laughs> and I ended up sketching some of the scenery. What I did was I did a pencil sketch on site and then when I got home I did the inking. And I also studied this is this I also did while I was there and I didn't end up inking it, but this was just a little study of the grass and rocks in front of me. So we have a blackwing pearl drawing here. And a little guy <laughs> in alcohol marker. These are my Shinhan alcohol markers, so I know that these don't yellow the pages. Some more notes of things that I want to do and some studying of me here this is more morpho some gesture studying of lions this time which I really need to go back and do more of this I really enjoyed doing stuff like this in the sketchbook Started doing the horse course, of course, by Aaron Blaze. More gesture sketches. I think some of these are from videos and then some of these are from photos. But just using Tombow water-based marker. Playing around with gouache. Some warm ups. Capybara. <laughs> this was when the Capybara. <laughs> That's when that song came out. I did the sketch. Or not when it came out, but when it blew up. I don't know if it came out at that time. More Morpho. This time just going straight in with ballpoint pen. Some more ballpoint pen over here doing basic shapes. And I made a note that I needed to study pyramids further because I was struggling a bit with doing these from imagination. Some more gouache stuff over here. And a figure drawing. But I made her an elf for some reason. Again, still struggling with elongating the torso. More gesture studies here. Or not gesture studies, figure studies. These are, all three of those were from photo reference, from a figure pack. Made legs super long. <laughs> These are value studies from Star Wars and then this was an attempt at the draw this in your style raccoon and who knew raccoons were so hard to draw but there we go. Uh, this was the preliminary sketch for an idea I had about a bee but I didn't end up continuing it so it's just remaining as a rough sketch. That's from imagination. I don't know what was going on with the hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then some nose. I, I think I did those myself. And then some different playing around with mouth shapes. 
I want to study hair and deconstruct how it looks and works and find out how I want to draw hair, get comfortable with hair from reference, experiment with methods and styles, find what works for me, build my visual library, comfortable drawing from imagination. So different things I'm thinking about there. Um, this was from imagination and I really struggled with it. Uh, <laughs> this was another moment where I came face to face with a lot of stuff again. If you're in a bad art phase, remember, make bad art, study from life, break monotony compared to your past. Morning warm up from imagination, trying out styles and proportions. The left eye is all kinds of wonky. The per this perspective is off. Some studies of hair. I feel so out of practice. I'm not comfortable at all. So this was just a, a rough day. This was just a rough day for me. These are studies of photo reference. You may recognise where some of this photo reference is from. Morpho. I don't think this was Morpho, I think this was me actually studying is. A uh, very faint eye. These are some brush pen studies of some plants in the garden. More simple shape warm ups. So, all of those are from imagination. And then some more morpho here. This is where I started to play around with gouache in this sketchbook and I did basically for a few of these pages I did a study here and then I wrote notes so it was a fun process Gou gouache behaves well on this paper it does behave well enough especially if you use it thickly and then I wrote things that I struggled with things that I just my reflections on it some more studies here and I, with this one I did like a thumbnail plan and then the actual thing so with these and a few of the next ones I was focusing on breaking things down into interesting shapes and again just writing notes on that process things that I liked things that I didn't like things that I struggled with things that I feel like I improved at another but the same, this time just a pencil breakdown and then talking about what I was happy with, what I need to work on. This was going to be a mushroom gouache study but I didn't end up doing it. I got distracted and then forgot it existed. Okay so I've got another full page of the journal entry here but I'm just going to read a little bit of it. I'm still not entirely sure what I want out of a sketchbook fully. Bits and pieces I'm getting an understanding of now, but only by following that flow and seeing where I end up and reflecting on that experience. By focusing on what is best for me and not others. Looking back at me in the past, I've come a long way already in multiple regards. My confidence alone, while a work in progress has come so far, others have noted it, are proud of me for it. Rather than thinking too heavily about where I meet, may be in several years time, I want to be present in this too, aware of and living in the eternal now. So that gets a little bit funky wonky there at the end, but um, I was just reflecting on even though I know where I have a long way to go, uh, speaking of me as in this moment in time, me a year ago, I knew at that po point in time I had a long way to go, but I also recognised that I was still making progress and people were noting that I was making progress, not just with my art, but also with my attitude, with my confidence, with the fact that I was reclaiming my joy of art again and learning to overcome a lot of the bad experiences I've had in the past. More morpho. <laughs> this was me experimenting with kind of a zone palette but a modified zone palette. Um, 
because I don't have the exact Zorn colours in gouache, as I mentioned here. Some more gouache studies here. I really love the colours of this. I absolutely love how I mixed those colours. <laughs> And you can see, I love this, woo! Happy with what I was happy with and what I'm still working, working on. Which is mainly value control. This was just something I sketched one day. A lot of proportions were being all over the place. Um, notes about things I needed to do, things I was going to do with TikTok. Some more studies, but these were studies from photos. So we've got a photo figure drawing here. Some hand studies. And a foot study. These were direct in ballpoint pen and then that was direct in colour pencil. Some studies of giraffe. I think this was because someone asked me on Instagram to draw a giraffe when I was doing like a suggest what I should draw today. Some more morpho studies. And um, we've got a bunch of different sketches here. So we've got some hand poses, especially for poses I'm not used to. And then we have a study from reference here from a an elf reference pack I have. That one's always really fun to sketch from. One thing that I like to do with my sketchbooks now, as you might see this is a lot of writing, I like to leave the last page or the last spread to do a summary of my experience with the sketchbook. This sketchbook has been all over the place in more ways than one. It took me longer to complete. At the time, before this one, most of my sketchbooks were taking three months to complete and they were the same type, same art creation sketchbooks, but this one took me five months. It took me longer to complete, but I was able to explore and develop new things in here. Travel sketching, experimenting with how and if I want to keep, scraps of memories, journal, trying and practicing new media and so on. With this sketchbook, I have been starting a journey of understanding my creative voice and its relationship to and with sketchbooks and a sketching practice. I didn't give myself set goals at the start and just allowed things to unfold as the sketchbook unfolded. I was able to face and identify roadblocks to my journey and the creative explorations previously mentioned. By doing so, I am not only aware of them, but was able to start dealing with them too. With the sketchbook, I started developing a familiarity with travel sketching and drawing outside. Things like my trip to America, drawing moving animals at the aquarium, and observational drawing outside and in public. I didn't do as much of these as I want to. But that is a habit I can develop in time as I become more comfortable and confident with these things through practice. How do I truly want to express myself? Not hearing and following blindly what others say and do, but learning to hear and follow myself. It's something I started considering more actively in here, and as such, fears and roadblocks reared up. Making a mess, making mistakes, doing what I want, playing with different mediums and techniques, confronting expectations, pressures, of a travel sketchbook in the public eye and of sketchbooks as a whole. Alongside these growths in myself and understanding, I've kept working towards my goals and interests as they are this moment, as they are at in this moment. Animal drawing, human anatomy and characters and the fundamentals, taking courses, especially the dynamic life drawing, and opening myself to capturing gestures of moving animals a rough learning focused process and not aesthetically pleasing for others to view, just a process for me and my improvement. From here, it's a matter of developing and branching off from the things I've touched on in here. From, yeah, from the things I've touched on in here about acceptance, opening more fully to pursuing my joy so that exploring and creating and learning is second nature rather than something I pursue while overcoming fears and things that hold me back. 
How much would I grow? How much fun would I have? How many sketchbooks would I fill? How many new experiences would I have? How much would my creativity blossom and be expressed if I let go? If I accept who I am, if I take the leap with a full heart? So moving on to the next sketchbook and the next sketchbooks beyond that, these are the considerations I have in mind. Growth in skill and understanding, creativity and expression, studying and self-awareness, on a skill level, I want to keep up with my improvement of head drawing, figures, human anatomy, especially hands, observational sketching, animal drawing, expanding on big cats and stars in other courses, travel sketching and drawing in public, drawing living and moving creatures, and further developing my understanding of values, painting mediums, and starting to explore colour and light. So there's a little peek into what I do with at the end of my sketchbooks. And then the very end of my sketchbook, that is what my partner wrote. <laughs> and I will have, I have a little thing that I stuck in at the back and just a few different scribbles of testing out supplies, but I'm going to leave you with this. <laughs> this is my mint sketchbook. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this sketchbook tour, I do have one of my older sketchbooks on this channel if you're interested in seeing the step up from that to this. And if you like viewing illustration processes, draw alongs, and all of the usual art content out there, you can check out some of my other videos. But thank you for watching this, and I'll see you next time. Bye!